Discerning Hearts provides content dedicated to those on the spiritual journey. To continue production of these videos, prayers, and more, go to discerninghearts.com and click the donate link found there or inside the free Discerning Hearts app to make your donation. Thanks and God bless. Discerninghearts.com presents The Heart of the Spiritual Exercises of St. Ignatius of Loyola with Father Anthony Wick. Father Wick is the Jesuit priest of the central and southern province of the United States. He currently acts as a retreat master at the White House Jesuit Retreat Center in St. Louis, Missouri. He also serves as a spiritual director at Kenrick Glennon Seminary in St. Louis. The Heart of the Spiritual Exercises of St. Ignatius of Loyola with Father Anthony Wick. I'm your host, Chris McGregor. We now continue the conversation on consolation and desolation with Father Anthony Wick and Chris McGregor. He's the worst of jerks, isn't he? I mean, it's... Yeah, that's right. And that's what you're saying there, Chris, is the anger that we need to have towards that. The, the one who's always enticing us, nagging us to do something. He's like, you are a jerk. You are an evil spirit. You can go back to hell where you belong. Well, that's what I... That's what, excuse me, but that's what a Monsignor told me, a beloved one, may God rest his soul. Uh, he would always say, well, Chris, you just tell the, you tell the uh, devil to go back to hell and take his little friends with him. Yep. Uh, there's something right about that. And uh, Teresa of Avila did that too, you know, and she would, when she felt the temptation, she would, she would speak to it directly and call it out for what it was. But with confidence, again, I just want to say one more time that it's, it's, Important to remember that that God's on our side, fighting, and all these good angels, especially our guardian angels. So, a sense of humor keeps things in perspective too. Like, oh, you're trying to get in there, aren't you? Well, I'm not letting you in. So there, you know, and slam the door in his face. So otherwise, I could live in fear and give the evil spirit too much play in my life. And and fear is the devil's workshop. So we don't want to give the devil. Oh, he's so powerful. He can plunder my fortress. He can destroy me. He can lead me under his standard. He's like, oh no, there's a there's a real danger of, of exaggerating the power of evil too. We have to be careful of that. Uh, to exaggerate, there's two equal and opposite errors when it comes to the spiritual life. One is exaggerating the forces of evil and one and the other is imagining that they don't exist, that, that evil doesn't exist or there is, there's really no such thing as an evil spirit. The great Prussian general Clausewitz the, the prime analogate of all military strategy, he said, you're going to overcome the enemy, is try to make the enemy think you don't exist. If they do know you exist, at least then try to make them think you aren't where they think you are. And then next, that you don't have the resources. Uh, so the evil spirit definitely tries to help us uh, on this path of belief that he doesn't really exist. This is more figments of our imagination. These are old I don't know, Catholic ways of talking about spiritual realities. And he gains a whole cohort of friends by just that notion that he doesn't exist. When we have ample evidence throughout the world of the uh, when people surrender themselves to demonic powers, how, how destructive and evil they can be. It's, a, it's incredible how, what evil man can perpetuate on man, perpetrate on man by the inspiration of these evil spirits. It's just, uh, there's no... How low can you go? There's no, there's no bottom to the depths of which we can, the depravity we can enter if we keep saying yes to those evil spirits. On the other hand, there's no, the, the heights are infinite of the sanctity we are called to and can live peacefully in this life if we follow the inspirations of the good spirit, who is infinitely more powerful because God is God. Yes, God is much bigger than the boogeyman. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So... With St. Ignatius, for the particularly this first week set of rules, where do we find ourselves? So we could move into the second week, which is just a fleshing out of this in a little more crystalline way. It's a, it's a little bit more nuanced, but if your listeners can follow what we've said so far and are tracking there, it won't be too difficult to enter these second rules for the second week. So they're a little more subtle, but uh, they're based on the rules for the first week. So the first rule of the second week, and this is not as, as many rules in the second week. The, the first week had 14 rules, and this second week only has eight. 
So he says that it's proper to God and his angels in their movements to give true spiritual gladness and joy. So Satan can't give us true spiritual gladness and joy. That makes sense. And so it's only God who can take away all sadness and disturbance, which the enemy brings on. So the evil spirit um, is always going to fight against these, this spiritual gladness and true consolation, bringing apparent reasons, subtleties, continual fallacies, using false reasonings to get me off track. Okay. We have a resonance to the first rules of our first week. Second of the eight. It belongs to God our Lord to give consolation to the soul without preceding cause. Okay, so this is a little bit trickier. So if if I am reading a book that I really like, it's very inspiring, a great author, and I'm starting to feel really inflamed with the love of God in consolation, that's because I'm there's a cause involved, and that is I'm reading a book. Or I have some good friends who are coming tonight. They're going to come visit me. I'm so excited. I haven't seen them in years. And so there's a preceding cause. I'm feeling really grateful to the Lord, feeling really... Or I'm coming back from a, an amazing encounter or spiritual direction session. I'm feeling really buoyant. That's a, that's a consolation with a cause, which is a good thing. But only God can give consolation without a preceding cause. That sometimes God just gives me a consolation with no particular reason. And he just like, I'm just overwhelmed and feel this happened to St. Ignatius so many times in his life. He, he began to lose some of his eyesight from all of his tears of joy. So a consolation without cause can only come from God. The evil spirit can't do that. So whenever cause comes into, whenever a, a consolation with a cause, uh, so for, from reading or from an encounter, from something that happened, the good spirit will use that to the opposite means of the evil spirit. So the good spirit will use that consolation of the soul to profit it, to help it grow and rise in the praise and service of God. And the evil spirit, will use, he'll, he can give us a consolation with a cause so that Satan can encourage a consolation that feels good. Like I eat a lot of ice cream or I have some good bourbon or something, but maybe I overdo it. And the evil spirit will use that for his contrary ends, which is to lead the soul to its his own damnable intention and wickedness. So here we have the evil angel as an angel of light. We're getting this from St. Paul. Lucifer, huh? the light bearer. So it's apparent light. St. Thomas Aquinas says, you and I would never choose any evil unless it had some apparent good. And so the evil angel comes to us. He manifests himself to us under the appearance of the angel of light to enter with a devout soul and go out with himself. That is, he might start and give you and me good and holy thoughts, Chris, about doing this, also doing that. One more thing at the parish, I'm going to also say yes to this offer and take this person on. I'm also going to pray an extra rosary for them. I'm going to say yes to someone asked me to make a dinner for them. So I'm going to do that too. And and then a little by little, he'll aim at drawing the soul to his own covert deceits and perverse intentions. In my life, the evil spirit will, if he can't stop Father Anthony from doing good things, he'll actually get behind me and he'll push me forward at breakneck speed. <laughs> to where I crash. So he wants me, if he can't stop me from doing good, he'll actually get behind me and he'll make me move so fast that I'll end up crashing. One of the herbicides, incidentally, we, that uh, when I grew up, we there was a herbicide we'd sometimes use on especially strong bull thistles that couldn't be killed by other herbicides. And it was called 2,4-D. And the way 2,4-D works is it causes such rapid cell expansion of the cells that carry the, uh, through the thistle, that carry the water and the nutrients to the plant, that it causes them to multiply and expand so much that it causes the, the bull thistle to like explode from within. It actually grows so fast it dies. And I feel like the devil loves 2,4-D. He loves 2,4-D. He wants you and me to be more and more accessible, Chris. He wants you and me to have more and more people texting us and emailing us and responding to this and that. So I can keep saying yes and yes and yes. And the evil spirits behind that angel of light. It seems like I'm doing good ministry, but I'm getting hyperextended. I have no time for myself. I have no time for rest. I have no time for prayer or reading anymore. And the evil spirit jumped in there in my own, just a little simple little anecdote. But on in my own life, I know I've had a healthy day, Chris, when I spend an hour of personal reading. Got to spend an hour every day. I have to mark that off because if I don't, I'm getting too involved in too many other things. I know that I'm going to do my prayer, my liturgy of the hours, mass. But I also have to do an hour of reading every day. Otherwise, 
the evil spirit will trick me under the angel of light that I'm doing so many good things for others and I'm not really letting myself be formed. I feel so differently after doing an hour of reading. There's so many wonderful things out there to form my heart and soul in. People give you good books. Huh? So that's my own personal endeavor to keep the evil spirit at bay there. So, and the fifth rule, so fifth of eight already, we note well the course of our thoughts. So that's how you're going to tell if it's a consolation with cause from the evil spirit or from the good spirit. Note the thoughts, how they go. If the beginning, the middle, and the end are all good, they're inclined to good, it's a sign of the good angel. But if the course of the thoughts might start good, but they end in something bad or distracting or less good than what the soul had originally intended or proposed to do, or if it weakens my soul or disquiets it or disturbs the soul, taking away the peace, tranquility, and quiet which it had before, it's a clear sign that this inspiration proceeds from the evil spirit, the enemy of our prophet and eternal salvation. So I think that makes sense, huh? That look at the course of your thoughts, the beginning, the middle, and if it's all good, good. If somehow by the end of these holy thoughts and the extra rosary I did and the extra prayers and the extra thing, whatever, or the thoughts that I think that I'm, I'm helping this person and I'm writing this long, expen expansive email, but it kind of leads me a little resentful they're not very grateful for everything I've been doing, then the evil spirit somehow got in there. Somehow the evil spirit got in there. And though I'm really helping someone out, I'm starting to feel resentful of how much I'm helping them and they're not helping me back or whatever. The evil spirit, it may have started off good, but I've, I've lost some of my peace. It's kind of weakened or disquieted my soul. It's a sign that the evil spirit jumped in there somewhere along the course of those thoughts. That's where St. Ignatius, again, you know, winning the hand of the woman, which is a really good thing for a man to have to do. But he realized that uh, his thoughts were dry and dissatisfying by the end of the thought process. And he realized, hmm, somehow the evil spirit got in there. Um, and he was right. We'll return to The Heart of the Spiritual Exercises with Father Anthony Wick in just a moment. This is Chris McGregor of Discerning Hearts, a nonprofit Catholic apostolate dedicated to evangelization and spiritual formation through the use of new media. Discerning Hearts creates engaging multimedia specializing in audio and video productions, which are faithful to the teachings of the Roman Catholic Church and its rich, authentic spiritual tradition. Its mission responds to the Church's call to use the media for evangelization, catechesis, and spiritual renewal. We have made a commitment since the beginning to make the truth shared through Discerning Hearts totally free to users throughout the world. Besides our website, DiscerningHearts.com, Discerning Hearts has a newly updated free app where users can find all their favorite Discerning Hearts programming, including Father Timothy Gallagher, Dr. Anthony Lillis, Deacon James Keating, Mike Aquilina, Dr. Matthew Bunsen, and so many more. There too, you'll find numerous beautifully produced devotionals and novenas, including the Holy Rosary and Stations of the Cross, to help users create a sacred time for prayer wherever they may be. Discerning Hearts programming can be found on numerous streaming platforms such as Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, Pandora, Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn, and so many more. Discerning Hearts also has an ever-growing YouTube channel. Discerning Hearts online spiritual retreats and seminars have helped souls in North and South America, Europe, Africa, Australia, the Middle East, and the Philippines. For many people all around the world, Discerning Hearts is a daily source of inspiration, spiritual nourishment, and encouragement. We can only do this thanks to the generous financial support of our friends and benefactors. Please consider donating to our mission today. The world is looking for answers, for spiritual guidance and authentic discernment, for relationship and community. Your support is very much needed and appreciated. Please keep our mission in your prayers and tell a friend about Discerning Hearts. We now return to The Heart of the Spiritual Exercises of St. Ignatius of Loyola with Father Anthony Wick. The sixth rule, when the enemy of human nature has been perceived and is known by his tail, <laughs> sometimes you only recognize the serpent by its tail. Um, I recall draping my legs over an embankment next to a river once, and I was praying there, and this was in Oregon, 
And I had my eyes closed and I opened up my eyes just in time to see the rattler, the eight rattles come crossing over my feet. <laughs> that scared me. But anyway, you recognize sometimes Satan only by the tail. You don't recognize that he slipped in there. Sometimes we don't see it till after, oh, 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 you know. So when you recognize the serpent's tail and the bad end to which he's led, it's good for you and me, St. Ignatius says in the sixth rule, to look back at the course of the thoughts that were maybe good at the beginning, and then little by little, they descend from the spiritual sweetness and joy in which I was to more depraved thoughts and intentions. And thus I'll learn next time to guard myself against you know, these deceits. So there's so many ways in which I, I think I'm doing the right thing. It feels good at first, but then it leads off course. It starts revolving around me. Somehow I get in the center of things. And so that'll help me realize next time I have these thoughts of, I'm going to really help this person out. I'm going to go above and beyond for this or that person. I'm going to, like, I need to be careful. I'm going to give a talk that hopefully will wow these people. Like, I'll realize if I do that, that's my intention, that somehow that's going to lead towards a distracting end, and it's going to be about me, and it's not going to be fulfilling like a, like a good experience is, or being available. Let's, oh, here's a good one. Like, I get an invite. Hey, Father Anthony, would you come over? Or Chris, would you come over? Would you do this? Come over to her. And then I realize, you know, it, it sounded good initially. Yeah, sure, I'd be happy to come. And then I realize I'm getting overextended. I'm saying yes to everybody. So if I can't say no, my yes means nothing, by the way. I'm starting to feel a little resentful that this evening is going on, you know, going on longer than I expected. I planned only to speak with him for 45 minutes, let's say. It's like, maybe I never should have accepted this invitation. I'm starting to feel resentful that the, the wrong spirit was the one encouraging me to do more and more and more in that case. So there's so many ways in which I can, oh, I, I need to watch more and more of the news. I need to be more and more updated about all the nuances of the news. And I, I just have to know this. This is really important. That the world needs you know, a lot of help. I need to know everything going on. Or within the church, I need to know all the the struggles and the strifes within the church and bishops and whatever within dioceses. It's like, do I really, you know, is that really leading me to, to joy and a, a stronger disposition to the Lord? Or is that distracting me? So when we look at the course of our thoughts, we can learn how not to let that evil spirit in. All right. Almost done here, Chris. The seventh of eight, it's a sweet little rule that, um, in a soul that's growing from going from good to better and growing in the praise, reverence, and service of God, the good angel typically will enter that soul sweetly, lightly, gently, he says, like a drop of water entering a sponge. And so that's a sign that that's probably a good inspired thought because I'm growing in virtue. I don't have mortal sin on my soul. That seems very peaceful. The evil spirit will sometimes, will always cause some disturbance. He'll touch it sharply and make noise and disquiet. He says, like when a drop of water falls on a stone and splatters, the evil spirit has, you can recognize the evil spirit, the tail of the evil spirit will be a little bit of a splatter. If I'm growing in virtue, there'll be a splatter there. That There's a little violence in there that's not, and, and contrarily, if a soul's going towards darkness, the evil spirit will be like water in a sponge, and the evil spirit's inspirations and the good spirit's inspirations will be like water on rock, because the Holy Spirit, that good spirit will will disquiet the soul, will we'll prick the conscience, as we learned earlier. So he gives an image there that the, the evil spirit will enter silently, like within his own home. If you're going from bad to worse, he'll be comforting. He'll be a comforting presence there. Lastly, eighth rule of the second week of discernment of spirits, and there are no other discernments of spirits than these two weeks. The eighth rule, when the consolation is without cause, this is a wonderful rule. <laughs> it's a little subtle, but it's wonderful. Well, they're all wonderful, but this one especially. When the consolation is without cause, so it comes directly from God our Lord, I'm just like feeling really lifted up in the Lord, and it's not because I was reading something or something happening in my life or something I completed or something somebody said to me. Although there is no deceit in it as being of God our Lord alone, as was said, still the spiritual person to whom God gives such consolation ought with much diligence and attention Look at and distinguish the time itself of such actual consolation from the following, in which the soul remains warm and favored with the remnants of the consolation, 
We're often in the second time through one's own course of habits and the consequences of the concepts and judgments, or through the good spirit or through the bad, he forms various resolutions and opinions which are not given immediately by God our Lord. And therefore, they have to be very well examined before entire credit is given them or they are put into effect. Again, I'm reading Elder Mullen's translation, which is very literal. What is he saying here? He's saying that if I receive a consolation without cause, comes directly from the Lord, that's really wonderful. That's solid, good. I can lean into this. What happens also, though, Chris, is that so that comes vertically from the top down into my soul. But then I start like thinking about things like, oh, I wonder if I should enter this group now. I wonder if I should start a Bible, start a Bible study. I wonder, I bet the Lord's inviting me to become a deacon. I bet the Lord, you know, I wonder if I should do this. And all of a sudden, all of those deliberations, they have to be discerned because the evil spirit can enter back in. It's tempting to receive a consolation from above, directly from above. And yet I start planning out what that probably means and what it what's logical in my mind about, oh, I, I bet the Lord wants me to do this. And he wants me to go on a pilgrimage to Fatima, you know, this summer. And I think he also wants, he wants me to tell my spouse this or that. And I need to get my kids all on this retreat. And I think this is what these things mean. And those all need to be discerned because those are horizontal decision-making patterns that the, the wrong spirit can get involved in again. So we've got to make a clear distinction between the vertical, the grace given me from above, and the horizontal playing out of that grace and the decision-making processes there where the wrong spirit can get back in. And so I have to discern each one of those uh, which went and where they lead. Because um, though the original grace without cause was inspired, the subsequent deliberations that I presume are based on that grace are not. Does that make sense? No, I think it makes great sense. Given the nature of this particular discernment that we're undertaking, this this good that has been presented to us, how much time or pause should we give to praying through this, particularly if it's a big change, but even if it's a smaller one, how how much space do we need to give that so we can properly discern which spirit it is? When one is discerning, and we could reflect a little more on that, making a decision and the times of a proper decision, when a proper decision is made, the Lord will grant the soul an ability to make a decision that he wants to bless. And so we're discerning something. He's giving a way forward. It seems right to us. But thankfully, he also gives confirmation in the days subsequent. So, for instance, when I was discerning if I was even called to the religious life, I was hoping I wasn't. I was hoping I would be called to the marriage life. And so when I realized I was called to the religious life, and then a call to the Jesuits within the religious life, it was a question of, okay, when do I enter the Jesuits? What, do I, what am I supposed to do here? And the Lord not only confirmed each of those calls, but he confirmed them over and over again in, in subsequent days of prayer. So I would say after three or four times of confirmation that this is the way forward and the Lord's inspiring it, and so several days of confirmation, you know you're on the right track, that the Lord keeps moving me in this direction, that it's the right thing to do, to maybe I am supposed to start a Bible study, maybe I am supposed to help out the parish or RCIA, whatever it is, or, or maybe I'm supposed to give up the parish RCIA that I'm running. Sometimes it's more about pruning. That I need to do. And the Lord's inspiring me to prune some good things that I'm doing uh, to be less available. Whatever it be, I'll have confirmation several times over from the Lord that this is more magis, more to his praise, reverence, and service. Is that helpful? Oh, yes, it is. I think, I just think it's from what I'm hearing you saying, there's a real power in a pause. Just, just for a little bit, you know, don't rush. He may ask you to go in haste like the Blessed Virgin Mary, but I'm sure that there was a just a bit of a pause just to listen very good that's that's a really good point yeah for her yeah i don't think that the the experience of the blessed mother there was a conviction on so many levels and with her soul being what it was that uh, there was a resonance that resounded with her so clearly and evidently that she did move in haste but that's not your my experience typically and so 
we need to we need confirmation that the Lord is here and the Lord is inviting us into the hill country of Judea or whatever you know to go to go on this trip or on this pilgrimage or whatnot. We don't want to be whimsical, you know. Oh, there's a wonderful pilgrimage going to the Holy Land, you know. I I, I really want to go. I've always wanted to go. I think this is the guy to do it with, and and I'm going to go ahead and sign up now. No, no, no. Uh, wait, uh, wait on any major purchases also. Oh, what a lovely piece of art. I'm in an art store, let's say. Now, I don't even have a bank account, so I can't do this, but but many people can. And uh, so I buy that piece of art. No, wait, wait, you know, wait for a confirmation. Come back again the next day or two and and confirm that, yes, this is to God's praise, reverence, and service. You know, this purchase, this big purchase is the right one, or this kind of car. You know, there's all kinds of cars I could buy if I needed a car. But um, is this the one that I ought to buy or Am I going to make a decision based on the salesman, what they're saying right now? And I'm kind of excited about it. I like the way it feels. I just want to do it. So to do nothing impulsively, but to do all with dis- with a discerning heart, to do it with a with an open, measured heart where there's resonance. And each time I ponder this, this possibly, is there resonance that this is indeed to the, the greater praise, reverence, and service of God? Is there a magis involved here? If there is resonance, and I, I've pondered it several times over, and the resonance is there, then onward ho, do what you're feeling moved to do. Any further instruction on this second week of the discernment of spirits? Yes, practice makes perfect. And so it would be good for your listeners to find online a copy of these rules. Uh, Elder Mullen's uh, translation, that little translation is online, E-L-D-E-R, uh, Father Elder Mullen, M-U-L-L-A-N, Elder Mullen of the Spiritual Exercises. So uh, they it would be good for them perhaps to print off those rules or a contemporary translation of it if it's easier for them to read and to begin to apply those and to experience the liberation that goes with applying these rules. And to it's wonderful, Chris, when I realize, oh, I thought that was the good spirit, but actually it was the wrong spirit. And I can tell by its fruits where that led me. And so now I'm all the wiser for it. That kind of experience would make Ignatius very proud, and you and I ought to be proud too with someone who discovers how these spirits are starting to work on them now, and frankly, it leads them in freedom. And that's uh, for freedom, Christ has set us free, says St. Paul. Amen. I love that. What's freedom? The the cry that I'm sure Christ will cry out for us so that we can move towards him with great love. Amen. Freedom to love. That's right. That is the criterion. and the measure of all freedom is my ability to love, my ability to give of myself, uh, to live in that, that joy and grace. Thank you so much, Father Anthony. You're welcome. You're welcome. Pray God that this will be meaningful for your listeners and and continue to lead them through the, the gift of St. Ignatius to the church to an ever deeper approximation to the Lord and an ever more discerning heart to receive the good inspirations and to keep at bay the evil ones so that we continue to grow in fervor and love of our Creator and Lord. That's my hope. My hope too. Thank you. You're welcome. God bless you. You've been listening to The Heart of the Spiritual Exercises of St. Ignatius of Loyola with Father Anthony Wick. This episode, along with hundreds of other spiritual formation programs, visit discerninghearts.com. This has been a production of Discerning Hearts. I'm your host, Chris McGregor. We hope that if this has been helpful for you, that you will first pray for our mission, which is to offer authentic and rock-solid spiritual formation freely to souls around the world. And if you feel us worthy, please consider a charitable donation which is fully tax-deductible to help support our efforts. But most of all, we hope that you will tell a friend about DiscerningHearts.com and join us next time for The Heart of the Spiritual Exercises of St. Ignatius of Loyola with Father Anthony Wick.